these were, it was an airport motel, by the way. Um, so you're kind of limited, your audience is a little bit limited um, at an airport motel. But the idea was, the concept, this is the late 1950s, was people are going to travel more uh, because you still didn't have, you know, it was the late 50s, it wasn't a really common thing for everybody to be flying around. Um, jet travel was, you know, relatively new in the United States. Um, and uh, so you needed a, a place, you might need a place to stay that wasn't in the downtown area of a, of a city. And so, you know, an airport motel. So, but, but really that's not why he bought the motel. He bought the motel because it was running at 100% occupancy all year round. Now this is unheard of in the hotel business. 100% um, occupancy all year round. Um, and he thought, you know, this is a pretty good business if you're running at 100% occupancy. And then he thought, I could grow it and put an other motels next to other airports, or I could find other ones and buy them. So that was the concept. Um, so I grew up in a household where, like, my father was sort of finding motels and putting them together and trying to put a brand on them. Um, and the first one was owned by an elderly German retiree, so he put his name on it. Um, an elderly German retiree, uh, and his name was Hyatt von Den. Um, and so the first, uh, this first motel was called Hyatt House, because uh, it was named for this fellow. Uh, so as I was growing up, I mean, I watched my father try to convince people, we had people over to our house uh, pretty much every week, uh, where my father was trying to market to you know leaders of companies to have their executives stay at our motels, um, and uh, and he was successful at doing that. I was sort of like a prop in his marketing scheme, you know, it sort of like bring out the children and you know the lovely children, and we would smile, you know, and shake hands like dutiful children, and then go back and you know we were really I'm sure nasty little kids uh, the rest of the time to them, but you know, but we did that. Uh, uh, so, so I, I'll take some credit for the fact that the business built, I guess, because I was, you know, proper in my shape, my shaking of hands. Um, anyway, so the business built and, and, you know, motel, 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 growing the thing into a hotel business. Um, and, and today there are, you know, uh, almost 500 motels and hotels um, that have the name Hyatt on them. Um, so, so that, so I grew up loving the idea of building a business, just this, I mean, I watched my father do it, it seemed like so much fun, he was having a ball doing it, um, and so that was kind of my interest in, in entrepreneurship. So when I, you know, as, a, as an adult, I, when I had an opportunity to sort of choose a career path, the idea of investing in and standing next to a lot of entrepreneurs and helping them with their ideas and building, helping them build their dream seemed like very natural to me. It was, it felt like I was experiencing that feeling I had with my father when, when I was young. Uh, and I still feel that way. Um, so when I started the venture capital firm, which was, we used to call it New World Ventures, and then we changed it to an, this oddball named Pritzker Group Venture Capital. Um, uh, but uh, New World is really a better name. Uh, uh, if you ask me, but this seemed like, you know, we needed to put our name on it. So, uh, I, uh, when I started New World Ventures, uh, we had not a lot of money, um, and we had the idea that we would, you know, find the best uh, interesting companies. It would happen to be 1995. So, 1995, there was a year when, like most people, didn't know what the internet was. Um, it was sort of this oddball thing that Mark Andreessen, uh, because he had created a browser, the first really commonly used browser, which was called Netscape, um, uh, before you know Internet Explorer, or Google Chrome, or you know, or, or Firefox, um, there was Netscape, and so, but most people didn't know what that was. But it, uh, it, it, it was everybody's avenue on the internet. So, 1995, I started seeing interesting little businesses that were had this crazy idea of going on the internet, doing strange things. Um, and I know this seems like really ancient history to you guys, but, uh, but back then, you know, there were no online colleges or universities. You couldn't take a course online. Nobody had heard of that. Uh, most of the things that we all think are commonplace, you know, didn't, didn't exist. So the idea, so as a venture capitalist, I had to evaluate, the, you know, these things based on no history. 
of any success online, really. I mean, there was just almost nothing in terms of business development that you could focus on and say, is it like the successful one over there? You know, and then I'll invest in it if it's like it. There wasn't anything to measure these things by. Um, so, so, you know, so, so it was hard. Um, and we, some of our early investments, as it turns out, you know, in the venture capital world, if you, uh, if you pick your vintage correctly, in other words, if you enter at the right time and inflection point, in some area of venture capital, you can be hugely successful. Uh, you know, you don't have to be sort of genius. You just have to be really good at picking business models. Um, and so I would say we're not genius here. We're just pretty good at picking business models. Back then, uh, just to give you a sense for the early investments that we made, uh, I have to say we every single one of them the early ones was it was successful I and mean, we really thought we were geniuses but we weren't we were just hitting an, a great inflection point in the market uh, but but an example was we invested in the first or one of the very first uh, online university uh, or online course providers so back then there was nobody taking a university course online so you said well who's gonna take a course online right I mean people go to a college and they you know, walk into a building and they sit in a room and they listen to a professor who's standing there. Who's going to like, you know, watch a screen and and learn anything or want to do that even? Because um, nobody was doing it, so we couldn't imagine it. So we tried to sort of pencil out what's the market for, you know, an online course. And the answer was, at least the way we figured it out, was okay. Well, who can't get to a college? but wants to take a college course. People who uh, uh, work all day and so they can't fit it in their schedule to get to, you know, they have to work so they can't get to a class that's in the middle of the day. Uh, that would be an example. Uh, somebody who dropped out of school because they're becoming a parent and so they're a stay-at-home mom or dad and, you know, you have to take care of the young child so you can't get to a college. Um, uh, maybe somebody who's uh, disabled, right? So, you know, a lot of universities, you're, you know, you, uh, I'm sure you've seen at ETHS, um, there are, you know, lots of steps and, you know, these buildings are very old. It's, it's difficult if you're, if you're um, disabled. So, uh, so those are three examples of large groups of people that couldn't get to a college or university that might want to take courses and then you know you try to figure out how many people that are in those big categories actually do want to take courses and add up your market and say well that's the total possible market of people and then figure out well what are we going to charge for a course um, how many courses are we going to offer what are the most popular kinds of courses etc and then you you know and then you can sort of determine what the market is um, and size of the market for, if you're in venture capital today you really don't want to go into anything that doesn't have a billion dollar market if there isn't a billion dollars worth of potential revenue out there at least for an idea it doesn't mean you have to get all billion dollars but if there's a whole market of a billion dollars then it isn't worth doing probably because i'm not saying it doesn't make a great business you guys could go create a great business that that a venture capitalist will never invest in and you'll make a lot of money what's the difference because I need to make you know ten times my money or more. You may need to make four hundred thousand dollars a year and live a good life, but I can't put enough money to work and get ten times my money in a business that's going to make four hundred thousand dollars a year. 